Welcome to another episode of the Mrs. Army Group. Today we have Asma and she's going to start off by uh, telling us all about herself, her background and any project that she's currently working on, inshallah. Asma? Thank you so much, Sister Zain uh, Zimzim, for inviting me. So my name is Asma and currently I... Uh, my daytime job is I work in university. I'm a program manager for a literacy access program. Uh, I love what I do. I work with college students, mentoring them um, to be reading specialists at schools. And then we also work with Title I schools, um, elementary schools around our university. And so that's what I do. And then I, I'm also passionate about teaching Quran and learning Quran as well. And so that's something else I do. Fabulous. So. Now that you've mentioned uh, about the Quran, what is your Quran story? Yeah, so my Quran story is actually very, I feel like anytime we ask anybody this, you just remember all the things we did. So um, it's pretty interesting. When I was younger, you know, we went to Madrasa Duxi, right? Um, and so through there, I learned just through like listening and like writing. Um, and reading, we learned and memorized. And when you're a little kid, you, you just memorize really easily, right? And um, so that's what happened. And then when we moved to the US, we didn't have a teacher. And so then we didn't have that routine. And so then it was really challenging. We ended up like, I ended up like forgetting everything I learned. Yeah. And then yeah. it was like a foundation of like um, reading, you know, which I, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Sometimes Somali culture, we focus a lot on memorization. We don't do as much practice in reading. Um, and so we started going to Sunday school and um, through there, I learned again, like the um, learning how to decode letters and words um, slowly. And so then, um, alhamdulillah, like through my just interest, I found different teachers um, just to memorize again. And um, it's been like a journey and I'm still on that journey, you know, where um, I try to uh, improve my Quran recitation and my connection to the Quran. And now I focus on it in a different way, I think. It's not so focused on like memorizing as fast as I can, but it's more about like how's my, how much time am I spending with the Quran? You know, like I want the Quran to be my best friend. You know, like that's what people- Without um, pressure. Say. Yeah, without pressure and just use it as healing and um, and I enjoy teaching others too, because that's something uh, when I started my Quran project a couple of years ago, that was my intention where I wanted to give back and support our community. And we didn't have a lot of like female Quran teachers. That's and so exactly. I wanted my, my classes to be uh, different as well. And then that was always been the intention of, you know, whenever Allah SWT blesses you with something, like that's part of the deal that you share it with others. And that was part of my, you know, and that's what I pray that it continues to do like I want to spend my time and you know now um how how can parents uh, set Quran home, home routines uh but focus rather on the quality uh rather than quantity because a lot of the times we put a lot of pressure on our children uh, making them memorized and, and becoming a half it by certain time um so how can we focus on quality rather than um uh, quantity that is such a good question. And as a parent and primary educator, I'd love it if you also shared. Um, this just reminds me of a story of one of my teachers where he was talking about um, Taraweeh, you know, like in, in Ramadan and how he said not everybody, not everybody needs to be um, praying all the rakat, you know, like some, some people, if you're a mother, you won't be able to pray all of the, you know, all of the salah, but there's different ways that you can still contribute, you know? Like from the parking attendant to um, the sister in the back who's like helping, you know, babysit the, the kids. Mm -hmm. So I think when the, if we see it, see it as that with our kids where we don't put that expectation of all of them need to be habits, you know? Cause that is not the, that's not the only way we can connect to the Quran, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and again, talking about like not having any pressure, I think the pressure comes from because it's a very, um, it's very evident like externally, right? Like if you're, if you're, um, if your child has memorized a lot of Quran, you can be like, they've memorized all the Quran. Like you can like talk about all the yeah. 
these are very external things. So I think it's like really easy to compare. Um, but instead, it's like focusing on for them to love it um, because you know there's a lot of people who end up having trauma with, and it kind of impacts their relationship with the Quran, and it's because they were forced to do it. There was a lot of guilt. You know, there's a lot of like, if you're not doing, if you if you can't memorize and remember, it's because there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You're not. You're lazy, or um, you're not focused. Um, all of those things they really don't help kids. Um, and for the families that I've worked with, I've said just make it really simple. You know, just like they have a simple bedtime routine when it comes to uh, literacy, right? Like especially when they're in elementary school, reading is really important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to love reading and we want them to um read a little every day for fun incorporate that into quran you know yeah uh, some of my memories of the quran is like just a ramadan like just hearing it and like yeah. the different writers some reciters you hear and you're like you just remember ramadan mm. you know so link their uh, relationship with the quran to like positive things of um show them the benefits of um reciting Quran and like being close to the Quran. A lot of it's also model, modeling that. So as a parent, if they see you reciting, if they see you reading it, they'll want to do what you're doing, you know, when yeah. they're young. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then when they're younger than seven, make it really simple and connected to play. So um, when they're learning the letters, there's so many different activities, right? Like using sand, yeah. um, whiteboards, um, just like very hands-on um, and fun. and when they're younger, like five minutes, 10 minutes a day is like, okay. Yeah. That's fine. No, with, with me, the way that I did it, cause they, they had a Quran teacher that was coming to them in the house, but due to COVID, we've now put that on hold, um, yeah. which was um, every week they would focus on a, on a very small surah. And then mm -hmm. throughout the week, we would recite that over and over again whether it might be with me or then they have, or they have an app, which also uh, supports them with the recitation and then using it regularly throughout that week for the Salah. So every time they pray a Salah, they're using the same Surah over and over again. And that has helped so far. And before we move on to another Surah, we make, we make sure that we've memorized what we've learned so far by reading it all over again. And then we add on the Surah. So I, we do it in stages. I don't like to overbear. Yeah. I no, that's, a, that's, that's really amazing what you just said. Um, and that's what I do with my students too, um, with the, the students that I've taught, where it's like, especially in the beginning, it's building that foundation and good routine with the Quran. Mm -hmm. So every class we would go, you know, we would recite from what they've memorized all the way to the end. And then it gets to a point where it's a lot of surahs. So then yeah. we'll just, we'll do like a page, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's what, that's the best strategy. Um, like with recent surahs, like we need to like re read them every day. Yeah. Um, inshallah. Yeah. Like I know it's not. Yeah, just, just build on it. Yeah. yeah. Build on um, it. That's really yeah. Good. yeah. So what's your, I'm a parent and I've got obviously mm -hmm. more than one child. So what's your opinion <laughs> on uh, comparing siblings oh yeah in terms of their like uh how much Absolutely. they've memorized and stuff oh your yeah. sister did it when she was since such and such age why yeah. can't you you know step it up yeah. or something yeah yeah I feel like every child is different right yeah. it's not it really isn't about the speed like even their milestones that they reach they'll reach it at different times right so it's about being um understanding who like how each um each child is motivated mm -hmm. and asking them too because again our responsibility is to uh remember what we've memorized it doesn't mean we need to memorize the whole Quran you know so mm -hmm. even in my students I'll ask them sometimes it, it can sound um you know after they get to a certain point it's like do you want to continue memorizing or do you want to shift it to recitation now because it's a big responsibility right yeah um mm -hmm. and sometimes and it's okay if you pause where it's like okay we won't memorize any new things for a bit um but we'll have a good system for whatever you've already memorized and you know as a sibling like comparing doesn't work you know because no it's a test either way right like if one sibling things are easy for them to um pick up on right then with that sibling it's like teaching them the importance of being grateful and being humble and sharing you know what they have like helping others right because it's really easy to 
with all of us, right? If we if something's easy for us, we notice, and then other people are struggling with that. It can be really easy for us to get into that mindset of like being arrogant or or that we're we have no more learning to do because yeah, yeah, too proud. Yeah. Where it's like when it comes to a brand, it's not just about memorizing, but it's also about like building that character, and everybody will learn it different ways. You know. That's correct. Um. So the one the student who the child who you know takes them a, a bit longer is giving them that phrase, not of ability, but that phrase of, I can see it's hard for you, but I'm proud of you that you're sticking with it. So that's a good skill to have, you know, not giving up. Dedication, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like um, showing them a lot of the things that, you know, like it's really easy to value external things over like achievements and success, but ultimately it's like going back to like being sincere, being patient, mm -hmm. and um, grateful. So. Yeah. So are you able to uh, elaborate a little bit more on how we can teach through play, how we can teach Quran through play, uh, especially for the younger children, like, you know, the toddler's age? Yes. So um, some things that I've shared with parents um, when they're, you know, if they're like younger than five, it's kind of, it's hard, even with like regular school, right? If you're yeah. homeschooling, it's hard to do like the lecture style or like, mm -hmm. like we're, we'll do like a full day. Of Too serious, yeah. yeah. Too serious, but like through play, um, kids love listening, you know, to, and the Quran is very like, um, soothing. Nice yeah, yeah, it's soothing. And it's, they'll remember it, like if you put it on repeat, like certain surahs. And then, um, so that's uh, while they're playing, you know, maybe they're playing and they can listen to it. Um, and then just being mindful, you know, that people are just like talking over the Quran. Yeah. So you want to also like model that like respect for whenever the Quran is on. We're not just having it in the background and then just chatting yeah, away, you know? Of course. Um, or um, have them like, I just remember like um, growing up, it's like whatever you hear, like your dua's, like your mom says a lot or your parents say a lot. Yeah. Like, you for some reason you memorize them and you don't you didn't even have any effort right yeah because so you, you, you've heard it repeatedly yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. it wasn't like a forced on you too yeah. it was just like more so any way you can recreate that with quran and like you know have the letters that they can um link yeah, into like, a specific surah or something yeah, yeah make a puzzle with the letters mm -hmm. um if they're learning letters and um have it um, just like with, with literacy, right? Like mm -hmm. have your, like have so many resources, like so many different books um, that they'll open and like it's a picture book, but it's about the Quran, you know, or the Arabic letters. Yeah. And they're interacting with it. Like that's really fun, but it's like up to them. You know, you didn't like force them to. Yeah. That, right? so, yeah, that's good. Ideas of no, 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 that, that's, uh, that, that, that's brilliant. I would, yeah. um, I would definitely start with the alphabets. And, mm -hmm. and then elaborate a little bit more on the alphabet. So something that starts just like the way we do with phonics. So mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. with the alphabets and then maybe link it to a surah that begins with that name. Oh, guess what? We yeah. have a surah that begins with that letter. So then, I don't know, some some ways of linking it back to the Quran. Oh, I love yeah. That. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about the parents? So how can parents uh, model a good relationship with the Quran so then obviously then their children are able to model that and and replicate that's a good question yeah I think it's um being honest you know as a parent if you feel like you don't have enough knowledge where you can support your child it's like sign up for classes you know start your Quran journey yourself um one of the parents one of the families I worked with there were two siblings and once they got to a certain point they decided to enroll the their mom like their mom wanted to learn from me so that they yeah. could practice, you know, because there's a Together. Lot of, yeah, and I'm like, that's, mashallah, really amazing. Or like as a family, like have building those habits of reciting Quran together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those are really like special moments. Um, yeah, I, I think kids, uh, kids tend to enjoy uh, whatever they're doing when the parents are also involved it's yes. more fun yeah. they feel like yeah. they're they're doing it as a team just like you would in school i i used to enjoy uh, group tasks rather than individual tasks so i don't have yeah. to do it all on my own <laughs> yeah exactly yeah like we have that somali tradition like surprise you know yeah like, it's actually a really brilliant and like fun way to just 
revise your brand because sometimes you're like oh that's a lot I have to yeah. <laughs> revise on my own or if yeah. it's like really weak like for me I'll like avoid it yeah a certain part seems challenging but I don't know yeah. it just like brings your energy back when you can recite definitely it with somebody in your family and that's why it's like everybody in the family learns you know yes mashallah and, and it's much more rewarding actually that way yeah um uh, also i i wanted um i personally love the the stories of the prophets you know each one every time i i'm, I'm i read a new one i mean not a new one but every time i read one i tend to learn more there's there's a couple of more um things that i'm learning about that prophet so how can we incorporate um stories of the prophets and the companions especially um you know with with this learning of the quran what are ways that we can do? Yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like um, maybe what we could do is um, pick, like, pick a, a certain prophet mm -hmm. and then find out the prophet, his stories in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And like you can recite those ayahs or listen to them um, and then, you know, do some research and learn about like what we can learn from that story, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's the story. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I like that. So, uh, for instance, um, uh, not too long ago, I think it was during Christmas holiday, uh, this movie came on. I think it's called The Prince of Egypt, mm -hmm. and 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 it's, and and it's linked with uh, the somehow the story. You know, there's a similarity with the story of uh, Prophet Musa, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, his like his people's story, like it's yeah, yeah. The most in the so um. So then, and then there was a lot of similarity in, in, in the movie that they kept saying, what's that? And then I was like, okay, let's stop. So I had to pause the movie first to get the story of Prophet Musa accurate. <laughs> so then there's no confusion with what, they, what they're watching with this animation. Yeah. So I was yeah, like, okay, we're going to come back to this movie. The, yeah, I was like, we're going to come back to this movie. Uh, let's first get the facts of Prophet Musa salam, accurate. Yeah. Once we have that on lock, we can come back and watch this movie and then just, you know, throw away any, any unwanted information. That's actually really smart. Yeah, yeah. having a conversation. Because uh, I feel like um, when I'm a parent later, I'll be like so worried about like, okay, how do I control media and like everything yeah. they're hearing? But having a conversation is a great way to like sort of kind of like vaccinate them where it's like you're going to hear this, but let's talk about what's yeah. the truth. Yeah. Focus on the facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the stories of the prophets, you know, like there's so many books that you could, like so many children's books um, and you could take so many uh, lessons too. Like if you want to teach uh, importance of patience, you know, mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad Salam or you got a Salam. Yeah. If you yeah. want, like the story of Yusuf Salam, like if you listen to and read Surah Yusuf, it's like chronologically, like the whole story. It's like yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. mashallah, it's um, amazing. Yeah. Could you now? I want to hear all about your um, your. Quran uh, organization, you know, the recitation. So I want to hear all about it, like how it had started. Uh, uh, are you taking on any clients? And uh, what are the future uh, ideas that you have, inshallah, for your company? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, my Quran project, I actually started, I think it was four and a half years ago. Um, and it was right after I finished my teaching program and done my student teaching, but I felt like it wasn't the right, um, you know, I've done student teaching and it wasn't a good experience. And I felt like um, teaching elementary school in a classroom wouldn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, so then I had I had a lot of time because, you know, I had a sort of part-time job. And um, I also had somebody from the community, a parent who had been asking me for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. like he wanted a teacher for his um, two daughters. Yeah. And yeah one of his elder daughter finally got um her license and so or permit and so then they could drive to my house you know um so we we started and so then i started creating this curriculum um pre-quran you know like starting from scratch from the letters and i was excited you know to use um the things i learned in my teaching program around like literacy early literacy um and then incorporate that to quran um to make it hands-on you know yeah, and so yeah. I created that curriculum. I was like excited and nervous, um, but like, you know, they were lovely. And um, 
and they were teenagers, but like very like mature and um, uh, and because um, I was worried about ready for the task. Learner. Yeah, and then there was that like with my adult learners, it's actually really interesting. I just feel like they have a lot of like they they worry that they, it's like too late or like they they wish they could have started earlier, you know, sooner. Um, so then I just love working with them and then for them to realize that like, you know, cause it's like beginner too, like they make so much progress. I just love seeing their confidence uh, increase. And, um, and alhamdulillah, I've just had students who work really hard and they've just been, I've learned a lot from each one of my students. And so I started doing that. And, um, and so through that, it was mostly word of mouth. It was locally. And I had, a, I had more students, I had, you know, some adult learners, and then I had some younger students. Um, and, to, and then through that, I just continued to develop, like, my um, teaching style. And it was just really fun. That's, like, my favorite, like, teaching, um, like, starting from the letters, you know, and then going to, um, going through the pre-Quran book, the Ayda Nuraniya, and then, you know, having, starting with the Quran, slowly, um, you know, having to memorize a couple of surahs. And in the beginning, it's like, they'll do an ayah a class, you know, mm -hmm. then they'll build on it. Um, but we take our time, but like, it's kind of like with the Quran, like you do a little bit, but it adds up. Like if you do a little bit every day, it really adds up. And so that's what I did. And my intention for that project was um, to give back to my community and just with the intention, because I wanted the Quran to be easier for me. And so it's like, okay, let me um, use the skills that I have because Allah SWT has blessed me with that, um, use it to help others in my community. Um, you know, and a lot of the students I had, like I said, especially the adult learners, yeah. there's yeah. a bit of um, that worry of like, is this going to work? It's been so long, you know. Like I had, I worked with two converts and um, so I, I think it, just, it was just really fulfilling. Um, and then, a year ago, um, I decided I wanted to shift the way I do programming, um, just because it was kind of, um, I've been doing this for a couple of years, and I wanted to try to do different things, right? So I made the difficult decision to um, kind of, um, to end the one-on-one -on -one class that I had been doing, um, just because I, I have a new project that I'm working on, and it's more on revision support, and I, I think that's also something really important and something that I feel like I'm the primary audience. And so yeah. it's like kind of creating something that I wish was there for me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting slow, like small now, like with like mini classes just to uh, test certain things and see how the group dynamic works. Um, but like my, my vision for this project is, you know, in-demand in uh, revision support. Um, like people can sign up for like certain times when they want to revise packages or something. Yeah, so according to their really availability. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wanted to kind of improve because um, there have been other things like Quran buddies or like WhatsApp groups where, you know, people put in the group like, I'm, can somebody listen to this for me? And I feel like if somebody's listening for me, it's like very passive and it's kind of hard to sustain. But like I wanted to try like the subreddit style um, and then also have have it be more of a community. So it's like, it's not just like throwing people at, into it, like saying, okay, you guys are just going to listen from each other, but there'll be like a system. Yeah. I want to interactive. Yeah. I want it to be interactive. Yeah. And, um, and I want it to be a safe environment as well. <laughs> like, of course, I don't of course. Judgment or um, people getting frustrated. So it's like the grouping will also be very strategic. Yeah. Know? Now, so, uh, what are the uh, age requirements for that? Like what age groups do you do you sign yeah. on? So um, I currently started a class um, for it'll just be like younger age, so six to twelve, okay, or seven to twelve, and then a teenager class from just girls, um, and then uh, just ladies only, um, adults. That's those are the three age those are the three age ranges I'm thinking of right now. Um, and like I said, it's still like exploration phase. Um, I haven't really stuck on a specific uh, program. Okay. Um, and then that way too, because my schedule right now, I'm also focusing on my own Quran journey and making sure 
Um, but I'm a big believer, like if I'm going to teach Quran, I have to also be learning and be, you know, professional development, right? No. <laughs> That's also part of it, so. You're right. Uh, they say uh, is to teach is to learn twice over. So mm -hmm. while you're teaching, you're also e learning and you're also securing that retaining that knowledge you know so it's absolutely, absolutely important that you keep that going um yeah. now if uh if someone anyone wants to sign on uh to your program inshallah uh, how can they reach you uh what social platforms are you on inshallah yeah good um so m currently my instagram page is the best way to be updated on any future classes um and just be updated on like the projects that i'm working on um, my Instagram handle is at her Quran story. That's my main one. And if you go visit that uh, page, you'll also see my like at revising Quran, revising with the Z. Mm -hmm. um, those are the two main pages for now. And yeah, you know, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, I'm very receptive to feedback. So, um, you know, if you have certain timings that you would love the classes to be offered, uh, that's great let me know and currently we're, we'll start with foundation right we'll start with just Agna. you don't have to have the whole just memorized we will work with you where you're at um so it'll just be like an application form and as long as you haven't forgotten you know those surahs um you'll be fine even if it's like really neat, so. so do you do it for adults as well I, I remember you said from 7 to 12 and then teenage um uh, section do you do it for adults as well? Yeah, yeah. So. That, that's my goal too. Um, for adult ladies only class. Yeah, yeah. I plan on offering that in the future, inshallah. Okay, so. but the children's uh, one from seven to 12, can that be mixed? Does it have to be strictly only girls? No, that one's mixed, yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to be just, um, that one's mixed, girls and boys. Is fine. Okay, all right. So Asma, oh my God, I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Um, have you got any last advice on how uh, we as parents um, can instill Quran in our children? Just a few tips that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis to allow uh, our children to love the Quran rather than making it seem that we're forcing it on them, that they want to do it from the bottom of their heart rather than mommies and daddies are telling them to do it. Yes, absolutely. I think um, when, so there's so many different ways. The main way, not the main way, but one of the most powerful ways is when, especially when they're younger, they see what you're doing. So um, just show, like, don't hide away when you're reading the Quran, you know, like make sure they hear you and they see that you're interacting with the Quran. They will, when you're um, praying, you know, like Fajr and Mother Minasha, like read it, reciting like, it out loud. Yeah, yeah. Recite, recite it out loud and recite different surahs, and um, have you know having that positive relationship with your children, um, advising them and guiding them. Yeah, uh, really provide a, an environment where it's easy for them to, um, you know, not having not having any distractions or maybe like a spot in the house or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, and when they're younger, like. Um, Small reward systems, you know, that's good, like stickers. Um, but then as they get older, you know, like around 10 years old, that's when you can um, just remind them of the benefits of reading the Quran and like how it's protection and um, it's a source of peace. And so um, encouraging them that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's definitely balance, right? Between like, like forcing them, but then on the other hand, like not, um, not letting it them freely decide what needs to be done. Exactly. There has to be a balance. Exactly, because we don't like do that, right? Like, yeah. Part of it's like giving them those habits, right? Like with prayer, yeah. you don't just say, "Do you feel like praying?" <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no <laughs> option there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So just show that it's important and it is um, something that you consider important. But the way they do it, give them that choice mm -hmm. and that autonomy. Where it's like, do you want to do it this way or this way today? Yeah. Um, when you're younger. Yeah. What's no, no. Uh, it, it's 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 the same way uh, that I deal with when it comes to, let's say, what I'm planning to cook for the evening. Mm 
yeah. I don't give too many options. Yeah. It's two. It's oh, either good. this or that. Because yeah. the minute you add more things into the list, I'm I'm making myself. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with a lot. Otherwise, everyone will end up, oh, I'll, I'll like that. And I'll like this. I'm sorry. I'm, this is not a restaurant. <laughs> Four meals. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, those, those were some really yeah, good tips. Yeah, because like, yeah, we also want them to be protected. And this is, like, really important for, like, their, you know, Muslim yeah. identity, like, for them to have a good relationship. Yeah, to portray that. It's really important. Yeah, later, yeah exactly. Because when they're teenagers, especially, they'll go through so much and... Yeah. that like foundation you know yeah and, and to turn to the quran and to know that it's a it's a form of protection so to know yeah. to come back to the quran inshallah mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I really appreciate yeah, no. you giving us okay. your time and and to obviously uh give while giving back to your community to also you know yeah. giving them tips on how to uh, make the quran part of our lives in continuously yeah. Thank you so much. Did you have any last uh, questions for me or anything else you wanted to add? Thank you so much for inviting me, Sister Zemzem. It was a pleasure to talk to you and just chat. And I hope we can stay connected. You know, Definitely. Later. Without a doubt. Thank you. I'll, I'll be joining you on your platform soon, inshallah. Yes, please do. <laughs> okay. Jazakallah khair, habibti.